Savior, we come to you, Lord God, and we ask and pray that you would show to us a particular mercy this day, mercy that goes beyond experiences that we have had in the past, and a mercy that will solidify for us, Father, all of our awareness of your good and strengthen for us. Heavenly Father, be with us before we pray. Send your spirit mightily among us. May your word comfort those that are here. May the blessed memory of our dear departed sister be that which resonates within our hearts and our minds. Grant these things we pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you were able, please stand as we sing hymn number one, our great Savior, hymn number one.
14, verses 1 through 3. John 14, verses 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now let's continue with our second hymn this morning. It is. M number 518, sweet box. Nice to have everybody here. Nice to see everybody. All right, let's start. Tarnica Williams. Her name, Tarnica Dorian Williams. Where she got the Williams from? I have no idea. But her grandmother or her mother was Francis Trump. Very nice place. Now, Let's talk about the mom for a minute. She's from now. She's from now. But I remember the first time I ever saw my mom. 
it was gone. First time I looked up and I saw a face, I said, Well, no time is going to move. Good place to start. Yeah. And from that day on, I made a friend. And no matter how the road got back, she was always there. And when she couldn't bail me out, she was still there. And for that, I mean, greatly, I don't get the word, but it's big. I, I mean, I, there's no words that can explain what I'm talking about. So I'll give you, I'll give you an incident. I remember one time I was very young and I wanted to find out where my mom would disappear every day when she was out. So I said, you know what I'm gonna find out where she spends that eight hours because I would like to spend that eight hours with her as well. Because I'm gonna lose time. And I, I wasn't about to let that time just go. Because I spend good times when I was doing the eight hours by myself. So to have anybody with me would be nice. So I concocted a plan. I was only about five or six, but I can do a little plan. Not to be able to find out where she can go, but I will be very discreet with it. I can go let her know I'm asking, or even let her know what's happening. So when she came home, I said, Mom, where the hell are you going to be going for eight hours? Because I ain't with you. And she said, boy, man, you mean you're a thief? <laughs> and she said, no, 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 no. I said, is this the same thing? She said, no, 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 so, so once she told me she was in the clean, so I think the next week I cleaned the fridge. Man, I took everything out. Mayonnaise, butter, man, everything was fine. So by the time she came home and she saw the fridge, she said, who, who, who cleaned the fridge? Uh, you know, I was well ready to say it. And and when she saw me and she saw the fridge, I can see them wheels turning. I'm a fucking I can bring it. He can clean the fridge while I'm doing the bathroom. And so said, so done. <laughs> Remember one time she asked me, um, you want to go to school? I said, hell no. I don't even like school. I don't care nothing now. I don't think the teacher likes me too much either. <laughs> she done bust Marky's head with a stone. <laughs> so we left. So, how many school was in that? So we would, we would go to. And the fun thing about books themselves about them is that every time I go to sit with her, if if she was about to do a three hour shift, now she's only doing a four hour shift. We got four hours to have fun in these people pool. <laughs> While we were doing it, had to remember we were there cleaning. So we made sure to be discreet and make sure we had that we get out of the place, they'll stay clean. 
thought we were in the pool, we drank, we laughed. I saw things I've never seen in my life. And it was fun. It was really fun hanging out with him. He was not only my mom, but she was my best friend. And in life, you can go your whole life without ever finding a bed. I could tell her anything. And I mean, she would judge me anyway. <laughs> she wouldn't, and she'd probably go back and tell other people too. <laughs> but for me, I felt a sense of security with my mother. She was there. And I could look in her face. And sometimes I just went over there just to see her and then turn around and do that call. And then she said, What are you coming for? I'm like, No, I had it. But I'll go off. And that's how we used to speak because the respect was so high that I could do myself and she wouldn't judge me. Now, He was a very proud man. I kept telling him, that's proud, that's going to be the best. <laughs> but he was very proud. <laughs> I didn't understand how he did that. You know, he had the attitude that someone who was going to lose to the people. I just wanted to respect him. And that because she was very and when you put your expectations very high it's very high to fall and for that I feel sorry and for me I feel like I could have done so much then so much I could have not argued when I should have been nice. I could have said yes, even when I said no. But the wheels kept running. As that said, I'll tell you what he was so. Well, he was very proud of giving birth to Martin. And he passed away in 1996. Was born 1961 and died 1996. That was the first tragedy in our family. It was hard. We took it well and we moved on. Now, we're going to go to a dream of what she was so proud to have. She was proud to have Austin. She was very proud to have Tom. She was very proud to have Tom. She was very proud. That is very proud. Yeah. And now I can see the fruits of her labor because had she not been here, all these beautiful kids, okay, what to hear. <laughs> 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 All right, here we go. Dear Lord Jesus, this is my prayer request. I pray that God will open up the door. But this is from my, my mom, but he's a hermit. Um, I pray that God will open up the door for me. Oh, no, for my husband. Yes, 
He wanted a husband. To bring me and my family together. He wanted that. That me and my husband can witness for you. There goes that husband again. I told you, she really wanted that. Um, that my family can be saved. Look like that. I would like a new home and a new car. Yeah, she got a new car. And she always got a picture of her. So she got that. I would like to travel with my new husband. There goes he goes again. Um, God said it is him will for us to be in good health and also. Also for what? Good Mark and you. And children who are low and need of a friend. Side journey. Yes. I love my family. And I love them. God. Thank you, mother, friend, and daughter. Every individual deserves to be spoken. And with that in mind, I know there are loved ones here. Anyone who wants to add any words, what Gary said, the hope is still before you at this time. Please feel free. I remember IG from a young age. Me, my brother, and my sister used to take us up, take us to church. That was my first memory of IG. And uh, we were little young kids, and uh, they would pick us up. And I remember one day, she had a ham and a stand wheel. She just looked forward. And before we could get out the car, she took off. So the verdict is still out if she bought her license or not. <laughs> but truly, from a young age, she planted a seed in me to go to church. And even after that, she used to take me, Marky, and Gary to church. And uh, we should go cabin. And, you know, I'm a man of faith because of her. I believe she planted a seed in me way back when. And um, I am truly missed. You know, I recently had an opportunity to talk to her. And she said, You remember when I stayed in church? I said, Yes, I do. <laughs> you say? I say, yes, I'm saved. I say, I'm saved because the seed you planted in me. And you know, it's a loss, but I believe it's a new day. A new day for us to love each other, forgive each other, and you know, just hold each other back, pray for each other. You know, the Lord is great. And, you know, I believe she gave her crown by planting seeds in everybody. 
One thing for sure, she always loved church. Wherever you find that she was in church. And her mind was real sharp. When I spoke with her, she could remember everything. You know, and I just, I thank God for her life. And I thank God for this beautiful family. You know, that he planned to see. And it grew. Thank you. Morning, Paul. My name is Isabel. Give some courage and I have a letter that my pastor asked me to deliver to the family. To Minister Paul, Sister Matilda Sanders, and the entire family. We greet you with love, grace, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our hearts were saddened to hear of the passing of your dearly beloved. Kernica Maureen Williams. Yet we take comfort in knowing that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We have the blessed assurance that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot do. Be of good courage. God will comfort your heart and give you the peace and the strength you need. <laughs> First Corinthians 15, verses 54 and I'm sorry, 54 and 58. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put, have put on immortality, then shall it be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Be it known that the pastor, Dr. Renetta Williams, Brother Floyd Williams, officers and members of the Impact Worship Center International, who hereby express to the family our most sincere and heartfelt condolences. We stand firmly with you in the wisdom of God's holy word, confessing that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. May the comforting power of the Holy Spirit rest upon you and encourage your heart in the sacred hour as we both acknowledge and celebrate the home going of your loved one. Respectfully submitted, Reverend Dr. Renetta C. Williams, Senior Pastor, Impact Worship Center, Chesapeake, Virginia. Thank you. Hi everyone. Well, thank you all for coming here today. I really appreciate it. Um, me and my mom, you know, we never seen eye to eye. And I think the reason why is because we are so much alike. Um, I'm a little nervous right now because I'm not a good speaker, but I, I have to say something for my mom. Anyway, I remember one time when I was a kid, um, I was very hungry. And I was in the US and um, I was cooking some Johnny cakes and I didn't know how to cook Johnny cakes. So I was mixing some flour and frying it. And at the time we had three stones with some wood outside. And I started to fry and the pot was, you know, all dented up. But it didn't really matter. I just wanted to eat the Johnny cake. And as, um, as I, you know, started to do, getting ready to eat my Johnny cake, this woman walked in. And I didn't know who this woman was because I never met my mom before. And so, so she walked in and she said, what are you doing? I said, I'm making Johnny cake. And she said, you know, here's some money. And she sent me off um, to buy some food. I'm sorry. So anyway,
right? so, so um so to make a, a long story short i miss my mom i love my mom and this is a loss that's gonna stay in my heart for a long time and like you said um Anyway, I have to stop at this point, but I love my mom so much. And to see her leave, I know that we all come to a point in our life that we're gonna have to meet the same journey. Um, and I hope that God, wherever she's, wherever she's at, I hope that God is there with her. And I hope that God did prepare a place for her in heaven. And I hope that one day, that same place that he prepared for her, he's prepared for me and my family and all the families up there. I love all of my family. I love you guys with all of my heart. Yeah. I love my mom. Thank you. One day, one day. In my short time ministry, I was able to faithfully preach the word of God before I got here. Uh, that man was a blessing to the congregation. I'm very thankful for that. Ernica spoke often of uh, Pastor Steve's kitchen, and uh, I want to see if you would come. I eulogize with this dear saint. So, Pastor, please come. Well, it is an honor to uh, be here, and uh, I know I don't know you, her family, well at all. But uh, I love you guys because uh, she would sit and tell stories about you. Don't worry, I don't know which case, was, which one. But she fell about life in Davis and then coming here and cleaning. And I heard a lot of stories, you know. And uh, she loved she loved her boys especially. And uh, so I'm honored to be here to, to in this moment. Although I came very late to the story. Uh, but I'm glad I got to be in the story at all. I'm very, very thankful to have met uh, Hernika. She was, I, I don't remember how she first came to, to uh, uh, come here. I know that she wanted rides and we, we ended up picking her up every morning on the way to church. We lived just past her and um, you know, right from the start, you couldn't be with Hernika and not be encouraged. We just had that just big personality. I mean, uh, you, thought, you know, even on the phone message, trying to call her, I had a nice talk with, with Gary. And, and Gary, you just honored your mom here and uh, thankful to have that conversation. He was sorry to get had that conversation with your mom. But you know, hear the message, I tried, to, I tried a couple of times and, you know, have a beautiful day. And that marker, I mean, have a beautiful day. And you, Spent time with her, you had a beautiful day, didn't you? And uh, uh, that was true for me too. And, and sometimes uh, it was hard to understand one another in different backgrounds. And uh, like she came over for dinner one time, she had told us she didn't want any red meat. And that meant she wanted her meat cooked, you know, like cooked. Yeah. I'm thinking she didn't want any beef at all. Like we, we made this, you know, special fish on the side, you know. Turns out we don't fish. That's, that's like cheap fish. No, I don't want that. I want the beef, you know, like, so you want to, but not, you got it. Um, but her engagement in the Lord was always blessing to me. I couldn't go encourage her. And, uh, 
uh, with all the differences and um, and where we you know where we came from, we had the most important thing in common is that uh, she loved the Lord. I love the Lord. You know, it, it's it's the thing that brings everybody in common. Like in, in the same way that we're all sitting here because we knew Hernika. So we don't know each other very well, a lot of us, but we knew Hernika. We have that in common, but even more profoundly, we knew the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I think about her rock solid faith. And um, I want to just read to you Psalm 27. It reminds me of the kind of faith that Hernika has. It was written by King David. And, you know, David's a man of faith, he, man after God's own heart. The fact is, you think about this psalm. He wrote, wrote the whole thing to set an example for all Israelites, for all his people, to trust him, trust Yahweh, trust the Lord God, just like he was doing, just like the Lord has provided for him. He was trusting that he would continue to provide for him. And he's saying, you need to do the same thing. You get that in the last verse. And he says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage for the Lord. There are hardships. There are enemies. There are griefs like we're experiencing right now. But his exhortation at the end of this psalm was wait for the Lord. And I believe that he meant for his people to imitate him. And more than that, David was pointing ahead at our greater king, Jesus. So you could also, as I read this psalm, I want you to think about Jesus saying these things. I think it points directly at Jesus. And then Hernika following suit. And saying these same things. I think it marks the faith in her life very well. And, and it's a simple psalm. 14 verses. Beginning couple verses saying. Trust God. The last couple verses. I trust God. You trust God. And in the middle. It's prayer. Don't leave me. Be with me. All right. Let me just read it to you. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army camp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war is against me, yet will I be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple for he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble he will conceal me under the cover of his tent he will lift me high upon a rock and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy and I will sing and make melody to the Lord and believe me I believe that's what Hernick is doing right now Hear, O oh Lord, when I cry aloud. And you see in verse 7 and following, now it's getting more intense, like the pressure is getting on and the troubles are harder. Hear, O oh Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face. I've said to a group, you all seek my face. But then he says privately, Hernick, I believe, has said the same thing. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. I'm not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. Oh, you who have been my help, cast me not up, off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Keep me your way, and lead me on a level path because of my enemy. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries. The false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out my. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. And let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Believe very strongly that this is a this this is a faithful word from our Lord to us. And I believe that Ernica would say amen. I'm thankful that I knew her. I'm thankful to have a partner in service who honored me.
by including me. Thank you very much. Do a look at the next item in the service. I'm going to read for, me, for you from Revelation chapter 21 and uh, I'm going to read the first eight verses. Hear now the word of the Lord. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wake, wipe away the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. The former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that uh, is an atherist of the fountain of the water of life freely. He will overcome it, shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and the unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and the whoremongers, and the sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second day. May God bless the reading of his word. Uh, if you would let us stand again as we sing hymn number 511 on Jordan Storm the Bay. Hymn number five. <laughs> Thank you. 
prayer, Heavenly Father, you who have the promise to land the blessings of all those who know you, who do this place. I ask and I pray, Heavenly Father, that you be with us now as your word is about to be open. Heavenly Father, as your eternal word, that life giving word is open up. May your spirit attend its preaching, and may your spirit attend our hearing. Give us grace, we pray, Lord God, that we might see Jesus Christ. That we might see your great hand of mercy in the life of the Holy Spirit. We would grant this for the Father in Jesus' name. I'd like to ask you, for those of you who have the transformation, you Judges, the fifth chapter. Now, the scripture we have the next to grow time in their history. It was simple because the nation had fallen from the game of sin. That serious sin. The sin that they had fallen in, fallen into, had brought upon them the judgment of God. And what God was doing is God was using the nations of Israel to bring judgment upon them. It was a serious time. But at that time, God did not leave his people without a witness. God did not leave his people without some measure of help and, and hope. And that measure of, of help and hope came to the people of Israel by way of an extraordinary woman, a woman by the name of Deborah. Now, Deborah graced the page of scripture in such a way that we would like to say that she was probably one of the most important in the word of God. Use this life as something of a fact, something of an hour, draw certain stones with our dear Superman. So I don't know what else, I'm so sorry, I don't see the life through the current double work from doing for But there are things in the way that I think are worth noting. And so, what I want to ask you to do once again is your Bible I'll read this one. Judges chapter 10, this is one of the Again, please hear the word of God. That same devil on that same saying, praying to be the Lord for the invention of Israel, when the people willingly offer themselves. Hear, O ye king, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise for God of Israel. Thou wentest out of fear. When thou marchest out of the field of him, earth trembled, heavens dropped, and the clouds also dropped water. The mountains melted from before the Lord, even at that time from before the Lord God of Israel. In the days of Samuel, the son of Anna, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied. Travelers walked through byways. The inhabitants of the foot ceased. They ceased in Israel. Here's the part that I want you to focus on. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose and I arose as a mother in Israel. Deborah, a mother in Israel. Well, we're here today, as I said before, to honor the memory of Carnegie Williams, speak of her Savior. It's very interesting that I want to use this woman, Deborah, to put her in his life perspective. And I'm going to do that in the following way. I remember when I first met Carnegie. She said next, it brought me out to meet Hernica, and I was very happy that uh, that happened. I got to meet her. I remember uh, speaking with Hernica, and uh, it wasn't long before Hernica would tell me about all of her experiences in the church's past, this pastor and that pastor. Very glad to hear how your pastor was so grateful that they sent out the, uh, the, the, the message there. Uh, she would speak of uh, church, this church, that church, that pastor, this pastor. And she would tell me of churches that she would belong to. But in those churches, they would have godly, uh, aged women. And those godly, aged women would sometimes be known as mothers in Israel. But it's a takeoff from this past description. Woman Deborah. Deborah refers to herself as a mother in Israel. And, and Hernika would always be pleased uh, when she would be able to tell me that church she was known as a mother in Israel. So what I want to do here this morning, this afternoon, now. But I want to take this path of the scripture to present a woman, a mother in Israel. And that's what she was in this congregation. Hernika Williams, a mother in Israel. And what I want to do is I want to use Deborah's life, Dalton Parallels, as I said before. And I want you to see some of the things that you see here uh, by way of our sister Hernika. 
Well, again, as I said before, these, these chapters, chapters four and five of the book of Judges introduces, as I said before, a very serious time in Judges chapter two, one through three, listen here, the children of Judah did each one the sight of the Lord. What a sad thing. And notice, and the Lord sold them into the hand of David, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the Catholic of whose host of Sistra, which perished us of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel, for he had 900 chariots of iron. So again, what I want you to see here is that that's the time where the people of Israel found these holy sin, and that sin has brought upon them the judgment of God. I want you to hear something. Sin always brings difficulty and hardship. Sin brings ultimately the judgment of God. And I want you to know that through Jesus Christ, that judgment is averted by faith in Jesus Christ. But I want you to rest. I want you to see what this passage of scripture is saying. This passage of scripture makes us deal with something that oftentimes we don't like to deal with. And that is sin brings misery. Sin brings misery in an individual life. Sin brings, sin brings misery in a family life. Sin, as we see in this passage of scripture, brings misery to a nation, to a nation's life. Oh, but God is merciful, and God brings up individuals. And in this time and in that day, he rose up that woman, that woman's bedroom. You know, this woman, as I said before, was extraordinary. Uh, she was genuinely, a, truly a leader in a time where men were the uh, She was a woman, again, greatly gifted by God. Uh, she, had, uh, she had a particular talent, a particular gift to use for God. And so, again, as I said, this woman, Deborah, was just an extraordinary woman. There are things, and when we think of her from today's perspective, we would say she broke something of a modern woman. They will do almost anything that was put within her grasp, within her responsibility. But when Deborah comes to define herself, if you notice how she defines define herself, she redefines herself as one, this one who was a mother in Israel. What a precious turn that was. From Paul, you spoke about the fact that Hanukkah, again, very, very instrumental in the coming of faith in Christ. Can we say it this way? She's the mother of you in faith, she's the mother of Israel. And so again, what I want to do is I want to take a look at this passage of scripture. Now, some of the things that true of Deborah will be true of her. Deborah was a judge in Israel. Very significant. It was a significant role socially, we might say, with different role uh, by way of the spiritual guidance and insight that was given there. And so Deborah came to well, again, her kind of a role among us, but she wasn't what we call a leader in the sense of the word. She wasn't somebody who was Church, uh, leading, directing, directing. But I believe that, like, if we were to want to be recognized in this little church at Moss and Baptist, I think she would say, one who nurtured, cared, one who watched the one who gave, who spoke very interesting words. So, Deborah, America, yeah, so in Deborah, America, we see in parallel. As I said before, I remember this uh, this conversation that I had with uh, with Hanukkah. Let me read what happened. She would she would often tell me about the church that she had attended for her life, and in a time near cross on the on the path of Steve ministry, when she was spoken when she spoke of a four churches, she would make teaching those churches that were known again. He always seemed to be great. He was thought one of those women in Israel. So we Hanukkah left this world and entered heaven. I thought. It was Fitting to remember the title, that Hanukkah William, of Israel. So we've already taken a look at the passage of scripture that brings that to our attention. And what I want to do now is I want to just draw some parallels between what we see in Deborah and some of the parallels that we see in Hanukkah as well. And the first thing that I can say to you about Deborah is this. If you read Judges chapters 4 and 5, what you begin to see and understand is that this woman, Deborah, knew God. She knew God. She knew the power of God. She had experiences with God. We could say in a very real way, God was not just the Lord God of Israel. God was her God. And Deborah was one of these women who you would come in contact with and you know, and you knew that they knew God. There was something in the way she carried herself and something in the way that she spoke. And oh, again, how many of us, when we think back on her, say those same words. This is a woman who knew God. She had great experiences with God. This whole idea that God was on her side, she would mention over and over again. This faith that she held on to again and would not let go. Here they again was Hanukkah, as I said before, this mother in Israel. If you would look at the top of the scripture, one of the things you would see is that Deborah, by way of a function as a judge, he was, she was pretty uh, instrumental in marshalling together the of Israel to fight a great war. Uh, she was not the general. 
she exhorted the general, and she again she did it in such a way as to as to remind them of God's grace and God's provision for His people. How many times there would be conversations with uh, with Hanukkah? I remember uh, there there would be many times when, as I, as I said before, uh, and you know Hanukkah's knowledge of God. And I remember as Hanukkah was was coming that's five or six weeks, and when Hanukkah was struggling a little bit, there was that cultural of what I would call that spiritual buoyancy that just was a part of her nature. And she would be struggling, struggling a little bit, but she knew God and knew what she would say to her pastor when her pastor said, Yeah, God is on the main line. That's right, sister. That's right, home. God is on the main line. He hears your prayers. And so again, that was a woman who knew her God. I would suggest to you that her, your dear beloved, was a woman who knew God. Definitely the woman God as well. Again, as I was mentioning at the moment, when she when it came time to marshal. Uh, the general to attack the battle the Lord's behalf. Uh, 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 was the one who, who, who led that battle. But she exhorted the general, and she did it in such a way that she incorporated the word of God. She spoke to the general in such a way that brought together a couple of different passages. She spoke to the great passage in Deuteronomy chapter 4, Deuteronomy chapter 33. He had all the, if I can say it this way, all the intonation of Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. I be as strong and a good courage. This woman, Deborah, knew the word of God. And I would be with Hernicum. We would be talking about things. Hernicum was bringing the bear a passage of scripture in, in, in many different conversations. He would start the passage of scripture, then pause, waiting for me to finish it. And then when I finished it correctly, she would say, See, as if nothing else had to be said, the word of God was brought to bear. Hernican knew the word of God. Deborah knew the word of God. How they know God? How they know the word? So again, Hernican was mother of Israel. Another thing that Deborah did to mother of Israel is that she, she expressed great affection for those who only follow God. Again, in Deborah chapter 5, verse 9, no, there's no part of support because Israel that all themselves to the people, but she the Lord. This woman, Deborah, she knew, she valued, she had seen those who had a heart for God, who had a desire to do his will. And so here we are today, again, giving memory to our dear uh, the sister Helica, and those who are here. Messages from pastors, former pastors together. I mean, it, 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 thinking back on how many times she spoke of past, past pastors. This woman loved the people of God. She loved those who would stand in the Lord's cause because she was a mother in Israel. And when she saw the people of God acting the way they should, oh, she thought to see that. So again, it's the mother of Israel. Often, those of you in our congregation right now who know the new heart, often think of how many times you've been from that affection that she had the people of God. How many times she extended to you a loving hand. How many times she extended to you a loving word. You see this woman and it was no way. And I suppose she would be the mother in Israel when she was alive. And the reason why is because I think that's a, that, 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 that term is to be reserved. But, but on this woman's memorial funeral, I want you to remember her as a mother in Israel. Let Deborah come forth. And she could have said, listen, I'm a, I'm a judge in Israel. She could have came forth and said, I'm a prophet. She could have came forth and said a number of things. She was, she was an accomplished woman, extraordinary in many ways. But when it comes to describe herself, what does she say? I, Deborah, mother in Israel. Oh, the mothers in Israel. She's born to a bare spiritual fruit. She's born to incorporate these qualities that you see here of the scripture. So again, Hernika, as a mother in Israel, expressing great affection for those who willingly follow the ways of God. Another thing that we see concerning, concerning um, uh, Hernika is a, is, is a mother in Israel. We see this again comparable to the life of uh, Deborah. Deborah oftentimes is forgotten a little bit. Did you, did you know? We read chapter 5, verse 23. That same Deborah and Ben, the son of Abinadab, on that day saying, Praise ye the Lord. Again, this is something that we often heard uh, by way of uh, Hernika. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Again, this was, a, this was part and parcel of, of Hernika's 
So just like Deborah was a woman, a mother in Israel who had the praises of God on her lips, so was our sister Monica, one who had the praises of God on her lips. I guess one of my favorite memories of Monica is when Elizabeth and I would go to pick her up and bring her into church and have to be driving her away with the thing in the world to do. So we pick her up and I'd be in the back seat, you know, never completely fell up my nose trying to get everything ready for you know, for the sermon, Elizabeth, Elizabeth and, and Hernica would be up front, and, and there was Hernica singing these, uh, these, these choruses. Some of them I knew, some I didn't know, but I'd love to hear every one of them. And why is it? Because of the mother of Israel. The mother of Israel. Yeah, you can see this on that. Like and I would say this concerning Hernica's desire to be known as the mother in Israel. Hernica does, again, the way she carried herself as the mother in Israel. This all stems from the Lord. You see, she knew her Savior and she knew her God. I would speak often with Pernica, one of the, you know, one of the, I want to say one of the highlights. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to just give flowery words here, but I did appreciate the times I had with her on Tuesday mornings when I would be coming in. And we would be talking, Gary oftentimes would be there with us, and we would be talking and she would be talking about the things of the Lord. And you know, it was interesting. Hernica never told me that she was a perfect individual. She never told me that. But she often told me about a perfect Savior. She often told me about the one who loved her. He has loved her sincerely. You see this woman, this mother in Israel, she knew her God. She knew her Savior. And this past Saturday, Stephen and his family were there with Hernica. Later on in the day, when Gary, myself, and Elizabeth, or with her to come. We were reading scripture with her, singing. I wish she would love that. But with every word, reading scripture, singing hymns, reading scripture, and singing choruses, encouraging, Elizabeth loving her hands, letting her know that we're there. And around eight o'clock that evening, I was looking in my mind, scanning what passage of scripture can I read next for my dear sister? Can I read to her? And there was a passage of scripture that I was looking for that I wasn't able to find. And so my eyes stumbled across another passage of scripture and it started out in a very good way. And I said, oh, that passage will work, so let me read that. And the passage of scripture that we turn to, uh, the third passage that uh, the Apostle Paul uses in the New Testament and 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15. But the passage in its original setting, setting is, in, is taken from Isaiah chapter 25. Let's say, listen to the passage of scripture. He will swallow up death and victory. The Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. That was the last biblical passage that Hernica heard that night. After we read that passage of scripture, we sang together, Victory in Jesus. And this was all probably happening about maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe five minutes after eight, maybe 10 minutes after eight. And at age 15, Hernica took her final breath on the and she went to heaven as a mother of Israel. And she looked in the face of the one who wipes away all tears. And she looked in the face of the one who, is, who by way of his death, destroyed that. She saw her Savior, the one she labored through all of her life. So, dear family, friends, I want you to know who your, who your mother or grandmother was, how we see her, how we understood her, the way we interact with her. She truly was the mother of Israel. I hope she's not mad that I never called her mother in Israel. But I know she would be rejoicing if she would hear me call her mother in Israel now. And so this mother in Israel, again, is now in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we sufficiently make a case for Jesus Christ in our life? Can we sufficiently say what it is to know and experience this love that he has for sinners? To know that no matter who and what we are, in spite of what we've done, we stand there with open arms, ready and willing to receive all who will look to your face. That's what this blessed thing would say. That's what this mother in the world would say. You know, lastly, when we think of mothers, they are defined particularly by giving birth. And I think in days to come, years to come, maybe, Kernica will still be giving birth. You may be thinking now the pastor's completely out of his mind. But I would suggest to you that in years to come, maybe days to come, maybe today, Kernica, by way of her testimony, will be giving birth. We found faith, the longings after Jesus Christ. You'll remember this good word, this good woman's word. You'll remember her love. 
they'll remember something of this funeral. And you'll remember a savior who loves you and died. Father, my God, we thank you for these lovely images. I uh, would thank you that you grace this congregation with one particular mother of Israel, Annika Williams. Bless her memory to us, we pray, Father. But more than that, make her Savior vibrantly real to each and every one of us here this day. Grant us, we ask, Father, to pray that we do. I would like to ask you to stand and take the insert in your bulletin. We will sing. For all the things. service is concluded. What we will do is we will make our way out. The grave site is within walking distance. Uh, I would suggest that you know, maybe you can walk with us. 
for those of you who want to drive over, we'll be uh, a little first. We'll get you a nice break. Most of the time, the service is concluded. Your mother, your grandmother, and she was very, very quick for us. And, uh, thank you so much for that. Thank you. 